Um, okay, let's welcome Matthias for his talk about the status of AppStream in Debian. Okay, thank you. Um, I will be talking about AppStream in Debian, which is uh, a project which is uh, designed to enhance the metadata we have available in the software archive. It's also known as uh, Deb11, the Debian extension project 11, but uh, since the, all the stuff that was in Deb11 has been merged into AppStream, you can basically exchange those two terms. So AppStream is Deb11. Yeah, um, so because AppStream is one of the lesser known projects in Debian, uh, first of all, uh, what is AppStream actually, it, besides from having a very bad name to talk about in, uh, at conferences because it's constantly, uh, yeah, this, um, constantly confused with AppStream with the U. So I, will, I hope I can make it clear when I'm, I'm talking about AppStream projects and AppStream, the thing that's metadata. So um, AppStream is uh, a metadata format which is uh, shipped by AppStream projects. It's a small XML file which is commonly found in uh, user share meta info or user share app data for the legacy, uh, as a legacy path. Um, it also, the name is also a name for uh, metadata that's shipped by distributions, which um, is an XML or JAML file which actually aggregates all the, um, all the stuff that upstream projects ship in terms of metadata. Additionally, it also includes some things distributions know about, for example, package names or uh, information that was extracted from desktop files or anything. It also contains uh, a set of uh, PNG icons in case you want to build an application center and uh, yeah, provide, uh, provide icons for this. So which metadata do we actually provide? Mm, the first thing AppStream does is to uh, separate the different software we have in a distribution into a set of components. Uh, there are a few component types, which are mainly uh, the component type generic, which is, can be used to describe any software, uh, the component type desktop, which is for GUI applications, then of course firmware, if you want to uh, have metadata for firmware, and fonts, codecs, input methods, add-ons, add-ons which extend uh, other metadata, or other, uh, other components. So yeah, this is what we currently separate uh, our software in the archive into. Uh, there are a few ideas for more categories, but yeah, I will come to that later. <clears throat> yeah, Upstream also provides uh, a unique identifier for every software we have, which is set by the Upstream project. So um, a unique identifier means that there's one tag the application is associated with, which can be used across all the distributions. So if there's one uh, RKDE Grandview desktop identifi uh, identifier, we can uh, refer to it as this on uh, Fedora, Debian, Arch, and whatever the software is running on. This can um, ideally be used to, for example, quickly check if software has security, update, uh, security issues, because you can check which version do I have of this software with this particular name, and uh, then have a reference list with those names, and check if there's anything wrong with it, or just refer to it, or just have a button which you can install it for. It's basically an equivalent of a package name, but distribution agnostic. The metadata also includes a name, summary, description, URLs, categories, keywords, screenshots, icons, etc. So anything you can think of which, can, uh, which helps the user to make an informed decision on whether they want to install this application or not. So, uh, or which helps the system to uh, determine whether the user might want this application. For example, um, there it also includes supported MIME times, mod aliases, binaries, libraries, etc., which can help to uh, guide the user to installing an application. For example, if the user has a uh, has an um, has some new file type which uh, it, uh, he can't open, uh, the system can suggest a set of applications which might be used uh, for to, for opening that file. So uh, this is how it looks like uh, in the upstream metadata. So this would be a file that upstream projects ship. Um, yeah, I can think I can skip this. Um, yeah, it contains every uh, a long description, uh, the ID, the um, short summary, etc. And all of this can be translated upstream, which helps us a lot because we do not need to translate uh, stuff downstream anymore. So there, uh, the translation work is done once and in the upstream project, and we as Debian don't, for, don't need to do additional translation work because upstream has done it for, you, for us. Um, so um, this is an architecture overview. It's slightly dated, but still useful to understand how this works. Uh, in Debian, we have a Compose server, which um, 
is the thing which creates the final metadata which we ship to the user. That one takes the data the um, upstream project ships, uh, enhances it with things we already know, for example, desktop file data or uh, package config information, and then creates a, assembles a huge XML file, or in Debian's case, a huge demo file, which gets uh, transferred to the user system, where it then is used, for example, for software centers, which uh, are the primarily uh, the primary uh, users of AppStream metadata today. So a few examples what you can do with AppStream. You can, for example, check what, uh, what applications provide a certain mod alias handle. So uh, for this one in particular, you have a Pi missile, which can make use of this device. Uh, then you can search, have a full text search. Uh, you can even use it to install applications by their ID instead of referring to a package name. So who uses this in Debian? Uh, those are uh, mainly the software centers, which are GNOME Software, Plasma Discover, and Elementary App Center, but also a few more, so I couldn't just include them all. But those are like the main ones that I know about. Then there's a tool called Eisencram, which suggests packages to install when inserting new hardware, which is really nice to browse the archive to see what software could I use to uh, get the most of my hardware. Uh, Flatpak and Limba are software bundling solutions, which also make use of, uh, of this metadata as like their primary format to get information about applications and to enhance the, the data uh, we, have in, in, uh, we have for, for software centers. So they can decide, do I want this stuff installed from a uh, distribution package or do I want this stuff installed from a Flatpak bundle, for example. Uh, Firmware Update is a service which installs uh, Flash firmware on devices, which uh, yeah, is a very interesting topic, but it would be a talk on its own. So I will just mention it in here. And also, obviously, the distributions. Uh, currently, uh, at least those mentioned uh, below are uh, fully supporting upstream. There might be more, but uh, I think at least Megaya is investigating it, but I'm not sure if they, uh, have impl if they are already <coughs> implementing it. So uh, what do we do at Debian? Um, we use a general representation of the distribution metadata um, initially, this was supposed to be XML, but our FTP masters don't like it, so we use JAML now uh, as the main format for this. Um, yeah, and uh, as you might remember in the last talk, talk uh, at the last DevConf, uh, this was still not happening. It was just an idea that we might ship this in Debian. Now we do, and as you can see, if when you open GNOME software and it has all the nice metadata. So what we did was deploy a tool called Deb11 generator uh, on appstream.debian.org which extracts the metadata from uh, packages on an external machine and then sends it over to uh, the FTP masters, which include it into the archive. Um, and then we also use a new feature of the apt packaging tool to make it automatically download this data for us and have upstream CLI put it in the right places and uh, build caches for it. So, um, then after we deployed the 11 generator we already, and made Ubuntu use it, we decided to replace it or again, to, uh, not to annoy Ubuntu, but because we found some, uh, some really uh, severe limitations in the DEP11 generator, which is mainly bad performance. There were some, a lot of Python 3 multiprocessing issues, which were not only because of uh, Python weirdness, but because the libraries and, and tools we were using weren't really designed for a multiprocessing case. Uh, it relied on contents.gz, which uh, is bad because we had one case where uh, the contents file wasn't updated properly at Debian, so uh, a lot of stuff wasn't extracted at uh, the uh, upstream generator. So, um, and it was even worse for Ubuntu, which only generates this daily or weekly. So, um, for example, if stuff moves icon around, we don't, didn't have enough data for it. So also it was Debian specific, uh, which was a deliberate design decision at the beginning, but in the end, yeah, it was obvious that it doesn't, didn't need to be uh, Debian specific, so we thought about making it more broad and allowing, uh, allowing other distributions to use that thing because it was really useful uh, for, for other distros as well. Also, the, there were some very bad design uh, choices in there which uh, made implementing features for, which Ubuntu needed but which we didn't want in Debian really hard. So. Uh, Re rewriting it was basically uh, a quintessence of uh, working together with Ubuntu to get it into their infrastructure. Uh, there was also code duplication with the upstream, um, which was initially intentional, but it's much more maintainable if there's one implementation, or well, actually two implementations, which read and write uh, upstream metadata, uh, rather than having to maintain another implementation in Python to do that the same task. So. Uh, the replacement is now called simply upstream generator, 
it's a complete rewrite. It's distribution agnostic. It's very fast compared to what we had before. It can read dev files directly and doesn't rely on the contents file anymore to get the file contents. And yeah, it's written in D, which is kind of obscure, but it was, for this tool, it was the right choice. Um, so going on to upstream.demi.org, these are the current statistics on metadata we have in the archive. The red things are errors, and yeah, the green is valid data. Um, one thing uh, you need to know when looking at these graphs is that um, one package might contain uh, multiple, uh, multiple uh, metadata or multiple valid metadata components, and also might emit multiple errors. So this isn't an accurate mapping of uh, packages to, to errors. But yeah, as you can see, there's still a lot of work to do. There are many errors, and any error that's found there could be a successful uh, component extraction. And all those warnings are usually old metadata, uh, which needs to be updated to a new format, or there was a, a failure to download some screenshot from upstream. So these are also things which would need to be fixed in, uh, in packages. And it's also something that we can not really do anything about in, uh, on the upstream generator side. Um, if you look at the evolution of the metadata, this looks quite poor, but um, if you include, because it's only from uh, the point in time when we started to use upstream generator on upstream.debian.org, um, but if you include the data that uh, the Deb11 generator had, we see a, a linear growth of valid metadata, uh, but it's, yeah, it has a very, very, uh, very, very small slope. So there could be much, much better, much bigger growth in, uh, in valid data. This bump you see there is when uh, the counting has changed of errors and warnings. So this is unfortunately not uh, people uploading lots of valid data to the archive. So which brings me to future plans uh, for we, I have for, uh, and ideas I have for this, this project and the upstream generator in particular. Um, one of these is to fill in uh, the provides type or the provides entry for libraries and binaries and Python modules automatically. Uh, one reason for that is that tools like pip, for example, could uh, automatically uh, download the uh, Debian package if there's uh, an equivalent version in the archive instead of using the bundled version. Um, but for this, uh, it will blow up the data. It will be much more metadata we uh, produce for this. So we first need to check if, if it's really worth it and if it would be used by, uh, by the respective tools. There are also some ideas to include all the binaries we have in the archive in order to get rid of uh, the command not found stuff, downloading all the contents uh, information and extracting the binaries out of it. But this is something that needs to be evaluated in the future. Um, yeah, font metadata is something I'm working on, uh, which we don't support in Debian right now, but Fedora does it. Uh, fonts are really hard because uh, there uh, is work needed from the font uh, package maintainers who really need to include a meta-info file, especially because the data which is in the font files itself is uh, almost unusable for a pr nice presentation to users. So, um, but yeah, as soon as support landed in, in upstream generator, I will reach out to the font people and ask them to include metadata. <clears throat> Yeah, this is one controversial entry. Uh, it might be useful to uh, provide the metadata that is currently in contrib and non-free in main. So if the user inserts a new device which requires proprietary firmware, the system can ask, hey, uh, this device could work better if we had this firmware, but you need to enable non-free for that. Do you want to do it? Uh, this is currently not possible uh, because the system will simply, not, will simply not know that there is something in non-free which could help. So uh, yeah, this is, this is an idea to uh, to work around this problem. But on the other hand, of course, we would have uh, like a very visible reference to non-free in the main archive, which might not be desirable for a project like Debian. Mm, yeah, obviously, one of the biggest things which needs to be done is to show those errors and warnings on tracker.debian.org um, in order to increase the visibility of metadata issues. There's currently a patch for it, and I'm working on to make it uh, merge ready for the uh, package tracker maintainers. Mm. Yeah, um, obviously there are a few issues in the metadata which uh, are not catched, uh, are not caught, and uh, we could also do some stricter validation, but this will only follow when uh, we have a substantial amount of data already in the archive. Mm. Multi-arc support is something which is mainly useful for Ubuntu and for Skype. Um, so if you have Skype in, the, uh, in an archive which is not in a, in a, on an architecture, which is not your main architecture, and you will not have metadata for it. So uh, yeah, adding support in upstream for that is a bit tricky, but it will be done. Um, 
yeah, also splitting metadata up into GUI, non-GUI parts might be useful for servers because there apparently are people who want it on, uh, on uh, systems which do not have a GUI front end and uh, don't have an application store mainly for this, uh, which library is in which packet or uh, yeah, for, for command line applications. So this might be useful to achieve smaller download sizes. Um, yeah. Also, um, creating uh, binary disks for the icon toggle is in the same area of, of work in order to reduce the download size. It was, there's a bug report for this, but it's a very hard problem to solve. So I'm not sure if, uh, if we can do it or if we should do it. Um, yeah. A mechanism to replace bad screenshots is, example, for example, if someone uploads pornography and we download it into Debian, we want to replace it. Or if someone uh, uploads a screenshot which contains copyrighted material, we do not or cannot ship it with Debian and display it there. So we need the mechanism to easily replace bad screenshots. Uh, I'm working on this. This will happen soon. So this is my favorite slide. What can you do? <laughs> it's, uh, the main thing is write meta info files and submit them upstream because that's where they belong to. Um, also, fix all the issues highlighted on appstream.debian.org. So ideally, at this DEF CON, uh, go to the page, go through the issues pages, and see if your packages are affected by some, some problems. And if you don't know why some, uh, some issue is shown there, please talk to me. And if you think it's a bug in Upstream Generator, please report a bug for it. So um, obviously, uh, patches are welcome. Bug reports are also welcome. And there are instructions on how to properly package and create metadata on the wiki. So that was it. Are there, uh, this is the page, how it looks like. Um, but yeah, are there any questions? So we have three minutes for questions. About 15 or 20 years ago, there was something called an LSM file, which had a format, all the meta information for package. Have you considered parsing it or reviving it or just extending it? Um, I must admit I've never heard of that. Uh, um, it was actually reasonably popular. I think software map had even like some searching functionality. And if you look around in the very old archives, you'll see most, well, many tar GZ files also have a .lsm file. So it might be something to maybe extend. Or okay, if there are still uh, packages in the archive which provide these LSM files, we can definitely okay. think about parsing them in the upstream generator and producing the final XML out of them. So for a user to make an informed choice, he often wants to know what uh, license the uh, package is uh, under. Uh, have you considered including licensing information in the upstream uh, uh, file, upstream file? Uh, yeah, it's, even, it's not mandatory, but it's even a recommended tag to add <laughs> licensing information. We use the um, SPDX uh, licensing tags for that, so it's machine readable as well. And yeah, it's, uh, so far, I think mo almost all projects use it. I need to check if, uh, the stats if there are some uh, meta info files. Do you, do you think we could generate Debian copyright from that, or do you think it would make sense uh, to do that? I don't think, we think so because it's not as fine grained. Uh, in uh, the meta info files, you have, for example, LGPL and GPL for the whole project or for this whole software component, and the Debian copyright file is like down to the file level in terms of information uh, about licenses. And that's something that's maybe a bit too much for most users. Oh no. John? Hi, easy question. Um, we started a little initiative in Ubuntu to um, try and increase the coverage of AppStream in the archive because, you know, as you know, mm. we added AppStream with our 1604 LTS release. Um, so people found it hard on both sides. So contributors found it hard to understand exactly what they had to do. So that's, I guess, that's a question of documentation. But also sponsors found it hard. To, to know if the package that they built was actually going to going to be accepted by the generator in the end, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if you have any ideas about how people can go about testing that, or if maybe it's possible to like make a submission service so that you can see if your thing is good or bad, or like make it possible to run the generator in a mode that just takes one deb in and tells you if it's going to work with the archive or something like that. Mm -hmm. Got any yeah, ideas or thoughts about like maybe what we could do there to make it easier for sponsors and for like uh, newcomers to come and work on this stuff? Because it seems like it would be a nice initiative for new people to work on, maybe, but it's also like not so easy to come in and start working on it. 
of at least for the upstream metadata files, uh, you can fire upstream CLI validate on it, and then it checks for formal, formal errors in the in this format, or upstream util uh, validate as well. And uh, yeah, for this, the most issues in the archive exist because there are XVM icons or missing icons for something. This is a bit harder to check. Uh, currently, there exists no easy tool for it. Uh, you can, of course, fire upstream generator at it, but that's a bit of an overkill. So yeah, I think, I think it might be useful to, to provide this service and uh, to provide an easy tool for this. So you um, generate upstream from desktop files most of the time, and these are the things that people were working on. So it wasn't actually stuff with meta info files. It was typically like something which doesn't come with a good enough icon or something like that. So mm. I know, I know we can, you have guidelines as to like, where you want to put them and like, you know, where they should end up and what format they should be in. But it was just like, how do I test if this de .deb that I've made is actually going to be accepted at the end of the day? Mm. Yeah, there are instructions on the wiki, uh, which are, I hope, detailed enough, but we should expand them if there are problems. <laughs> Thank you very much. We are out of time, so thanks again.